welcome to Studio 5. Hootie and the Blowfish's drummer puts down the sticks and picks up a pen to share his personal band story. We have your Studio 5 first look at the sixth film in the Jurassic Park franchise, and we have new music to share from Major. As we prepare to deliver all of that, let's go right to the countdown of the top five headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are your first two. At number five. I bet you're up there making new friends. I'm pretty sure you're loving every minute. Rising country music star Jimmy Allen shares the importance of Christian music, his faith, and how they keep him grounded in the entertainment industry. I am so honored to be here tonight. Um, I'm a huge fan of K-Love. So many artists in this room. I love Christian music. I ain't gonna lie to you. I bump it in my car all the time. He opens up here at this year's K-Love Fan Awards. I used to lead worship with Joel and Luke from the King Country, and I've known Torn Wells forever. Allen makes a point to record at least one Christian single on every country album. And the winner this year's breakout single is Ann Wilson, My Jesus. At number four. You guys not allowed? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It could be time to snag valuable Michael Jordan memorabilia at a New York auction. When I was younger, kids would line up around the block in order to buy a collectible pair of sneakers dropping from Nike. I think that we've taken that to the next level. A pair of his Jordan 1s from his first season are up for grabs, with bidding at more than $35,000. And a signed 1986 rookie card is estimated to fetch two to three million dollars. Bidding ends Saturday. He really is one of the greatest athletes of all time. He was inspirational on and off the court, and he really did his legacy kind of lived on, not just in sports, but also in you know collectible sneakers, um, in fashion in the 90s. Hold My Hand, Only Want to Be With You, and Let Her Cry. Those are all hit songs from the band Hootie and the Blowfish, and its longtime drummer had a hand in helping to write them, and now, Jimmy Sonny Sonnenfeld is writing and sharing his band story in a new memoir, Swimming with the Blowfish, Hootie Healing and One Hell of a Ride. With a little love and some tenderness, we'll walk upon the water, we'll rise above the mist with a little peace and some harmony. We'll tear the world together, we'll tear them by the hand. It's called Swimming with the Blowfish, uh, Hootie, Healing, and One Hell of a Ride. I, I wanted to say something that might be helpful to the people out there. A, they get to take a look behind the scenes at the band and how we got to uh, the place of sort of uh, popularity in the mid 90s. It also talks about the difficulties and I want people to know that no matter what you think of someone in the media or uh, in, in the entertainment world, it's rarely all of the story. Describe the ride for you. What's it been like? Like any ride or like any good ride, you know, it certainly has had ups and downs and we worked hard for five years playing clubs and uh, toiling away at our craft and uh, suddenly in 19, the end of 1994 things shot skyward and we enjoyed five solid years of being at the top and really getting to travel the world, get to do some wonderful uh, things in different places and having a lot of fans but that ride also began to come down uh, after 2000 and I was uh, caught up in really the denial that our career was sliding down and that uh, had some emotional imbalances that I tried to fix with uh, chemicals. And uh, I, even after friends began being worried about me, it took me probably four years to come to a realization and a, and a reality that I was no longer in control and I needed to turn my life over. So struggle with addiction for four years? Yeah, it was uh, drugs and alcohol, which led to bad decision making, which led to bad places. It's a common story, but I thought I had control over it. And that was my main 
main problem is thinking I was a, a man who is wise in his own eyes. What was rock bottom for the rock star? A moment that was the bottom for me, which turned turned me, was my four-year-old daughter who uh, found me passed out in my uh, studio couch one Sunday morning and just said a, f a few words that struck me as profound and uh, perhaps providential. She said, Dad, what are you doing? And she looked at me with all the cuteness of a four-year-old, four-year-old, what are you doing, Dad? Why are you out here and the family's in there having fun? What are you doing? And as she strolled away frustrated, I was faced with those words, what am I doing? And I, I could do nothing else but look upwards and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, do I? <laughs> and uh, it was that day I turned for the first time to ask someone for help, someone for guidance, tell me where to go, tell me what to do. And uh, that person I asked told me a little bit about his spiritual program, which I ended up uh, following and it led me back to Christ, it led me back to the Bible, it led me to a transformational life. Share for me practically, how does that look? How do you begin to, to turn things around and get back up? The first bit of that journey was practicing some good old fashioned self-honesty. I needed to be around people that could help me understand what humility is. And so I started working with the 12 step model that helps a lot of recoverers get through uh, not only chemical addiction, but bad thinking. And uh, that's how I started. I started getting honest and you know, it, it has worked for me. I didn't like what I saw at all times, but maybe that was the point of it. I needed to, to face what I didn't like and acknowledge it and, and move forward responsibly and act. We're hearing how it impacted your um, young family. How did this impact or the dynamics play out in your musical family? We still remain a band and are still a band because they have allowed me to live out my spirituality. They've just been wonderful. They've even allowed me to bring my more spiritual music on the Hootie stage, which is a fantastic acknowledgement to say, hey, we support this journey you're on and it's a story that maybe will touch anyone's hearts. Swimming with the Blowfish, Hootie Healing and One Hell of a Ride is available right now. And Jim's new solo album, Remember Tomorrow, will be available next month. Some of the singles for that project are already in rotation for you to grab. Just moments away. I wanted to show them something that wasn't in the ocean. It's a Studio 5 first look at the sixth film in the Mega Jurassic World franchise. We can't keep her here forever. They find out we're never gonna see her again. We gotta protect her, that's our job. Humans and dinosaurs can't coexist. Jurassic World Dominion takes center stage next. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Nutrition. Exercise. Essential oils weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN Health Reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. At number three. Good morning, AD. This is your captain speaking. It's the second week at number one for Top Gun Maverick. The sequel scored another 86 million bucks, only a third less than last week's debut, and putting its total domestic gross at just over $292 million and nearly $548 million globally. Those numbers officially make Top Gun Maverick the highest grossing film domestically for star Tom Cruise, without adjusting for inflation, flying past 2005's War of the Worlds. At number two. Beautiful. Each color that he made, yeah. He loves the only remedy for hate. 
A new week brings more news from Maverick City Music. Let me ask about Maverick City real quick. I mean, within the last year or two, I mean, you guys are everywhere. How did it happen? God decided to breathe on, on these little like altars in the form of songs to reignite hope in the hearts of his people. So I th we don't really know. I think like it just kind of took off like a tidal wave. We didn't plan for it to happen. We were just people getting together, writing songs and singing songs, and we just didn't. We didn't necessarily have a plan or a guide to try to like, you know what I mean? So I don't. We don't really know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> the latest happening is a new solo recording from the group's breakout star, Naomi Rain. Let's just be honest, Jesus, I'm a mess. Can't seem to fill this void of empty. This is called Not Ready. It's the debut single from her album, Journey, which will be available July 8th. Some of our worship songs are very much about what we've been through, what we're going through. Like, this is just about God and what he's done. That leaves us with one more story to share in this week's countdown. We'll pick it back up in just a matter of minutes. Right now, we turn to the latest summer blockbuster. Jurassic World Dominion is the sixth film in the mega franchise, and box office estimates exceed $400 million in the U.S. alone in this installment. Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are joined by Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum the trio who led the 1993 original. We had an enormous amount of fun on the first film. energy on set that it was the first time you'd ever seen anything like this. I was excited about everything that it could be. When I saw the dinosaur in the trailer and I saw the ripples on the water, I was like, oh my gosh. It really defined my generation, this film. I cried the first time I saw dinosaurs. Suddenly, that which had never seemed real before now was totally real. And I realized at that moment that cinema forever had changed. Jurassic World Dominion is the culmination of the franchise. It concludes a story that Steven Spielberg started telling in 1993. When we were making Jurassic World, I knew it was going to be really special. Yeah! I could never have imagined we'd be here working alongside Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern. It's pretty fantastic. It is so much fun. It is everything we could have ever hoped for and more. I thought it was a fantastic idea to bring these two worlds together. It's been a great privilege to be a custodian of something like this. Our legacy characters, our Jurassic World characters are back. Our storylines intersect. It's the convergence of the two franchises. You need to fix a terrible mistake. This is what everything has been leading to. I could use your expertise. You coming or what? Hold on! Why, Why do they always have to go bigger? Don't, don't move. And the wait is over. You can find Jurassic World Dominion in theaters this week. We need to take a quick break right here, but before we do, we want to share a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. A 1940 Disney classic gets a remake, and we now have a release date for the new take on Pinocchio, starring Tom Hanks as Geppetto and Cynthia Erivo as the Blue Fairy. The live action film is an exclusive for Disney Plus, premiering September 8th. That's Disney Plus Day. It's an anniversary celebration of the streaming platform it produced last year. And this Pinocchio tale is only the first announced premiere for Disney Plus Day. There are more to come, but this photo preview of Pinocchio is most worthy of being this week's Studio 5 snapshot. Still to come. The moment. 
So now, I need you to hear the sound of your surroundings. He's a major hope dealer. Hope. It's a powerful thing. With a new musical message for the world. something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Come and... Oh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. That is Major's newly released and reimagined version of Whole World in His Hands. It's a fitting reminder in light of all that we are seeing unfold in our world today. His new single also marks a return to his gospel roots on a new record label. But as we know, Major's most popular tune is a love song to the God he's still singing about in this latest single. This song introduced him to the world in 2016, solidified his single name, Major. Before people knew of me for, this is why I love you. I was told so many no's, still experienced no's, and so many opinions of, of experts telling me a song's not gonna work on radio. Both American Idol and The Voice. Yeah. Oh, you really <laughs> have done <laughs> research. <laughs> Unbelievable because they said I was great, but no thanks. Simon said I was too polished for the show. I'm like, this is strange. This is weird. This is discouraging um, because you, you just kind of build your hope on the things that you think are what it is. And that's when I realized that my hope has to be anchored in something that's more constant than the things that I'm aiming towards. And that's why my hope is in my faith center, God. I just want to be honest. I just want to be honest. A Grammy nomination and two albums later. So I know we can't see it because mm -hmm. it's covered up by your jacket right now, but you oh. have labeled yourself <laughs> the hope dealer. Listen, <laughs> listen, it's, it's hope right there. Mm. Hope right there. Major's touring the country with a new nickname and a new spoken word project. He sat down with us at the Atlanta stop of the Major Hope Experience. And I want to be specific that I put major, which is stylized all caps with a period, mm -hmm. dot hope. So it's major point hope. And it's, 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 it's spoken as major hope because I want people to understand that this concept is not just some fluffy cliche. It's to be understood that major hope would be synonymous with the, the unapologetic embrace of it. Hope is not the denial of reality. It's a commitment to believe greater is on the other side of it. What prompted it? What sparked it in your heart? I've been about this work all of my life. Um, I was awakened to the call when I graduated college. I was the first of my siblings to graduate 
My mom tells me why she named me Major. And uh, that came with the story of perseverance for herself because she was, you know, I have, pregnant with a kid out of wedlock and considered abortion. So she's like, what do I do with this child that people are gonna judge me for having if I have it? Divine intervention, you know, stepped in and um, on her way twice to the abortion clinic, she had car, se severe car trouble from a tire busting to a tire uh, just going flat in nearly the same spot each time she went. So mm -hmm. she was like, God, I hear you. I'm gonna move forward with having this child. And if I name a major, I pray that he makes a major impact on the world. Mm -hmm. And so we salute moms for always having intention. Impact and intention bring us back to Major's most popular song. I found love, and Lord, I found it in you. And no other love, no other love will do. And who inspired his lyrics? God spoke to you and said that if you sing about me, the rest the of the world will sing about <laughs> Oh, you've been doing some yeah. research. All right, brother, all right, brother. That's it, yeah. As I was writing why I Love You, I was, um, I was writing the love song and I was trying to figure out ways to be clever, you know, and, and uh, Harmony was like, I said, Harmony, words are coming, but they don't feel real. And I said, I know heartbreak. I don't know a consistent love that has shown me what I'm wanting to sing about. And he says, you've never experienced this? I said, God? He says, so write to God. And I said, that's it. Wow. And, and as I prayed, I remember hearing, write about me and the rest of the world will sing along. Can you help me sing this? Everybody say this is why. Major's newly released and reimagined version of Whole World in His Hands is available right now, and we can all be on the lookout for more from the Grammy-nominated artist who is returning to his gospel roots on a new record label. On that note, we have made it to the final story in this week's countdown of the five best stories in uplifting entertainment. Here is what's finishing on top this week. At number one. When you're trying to find the one, why do you need reminding? No matter how you look at it, it's me you keep finding. New music and a new life for recording artist MIA. MIA is now a born again Christian. What? The British rapper making a splash of headlines with news that a vision of Christ has turned her world upside down. When MIA was in this interview with Zane Lowe, she replied, Yes, I am a born again Christian. I do not want to hide that. I don't want to lie. And I want my fans to know there's a reason I'm telling them that Jesus is real. She said Jesus revealed herself, himself to her in a dream and it changed her life. And now she's a born again believer. Um, praise God. Why are you looking for the one, one, one? When you said to done, done, done. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I like your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com slash Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs. Incredible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Studio 5. Music is on repeat as we put this show together each week. And this week, it's been a little something new from a very familiar, inspirational voice. Take a listen and hear why Stephen Curtis Chapman still is what's playing in my ear. 
All my days I will sing of his faithfulness. On that musical note, we are almost out of time for this edition of Studio 5. So let's take a quick look ahead to see what's coming your way next week. I was always good with math, codes, puzzles, you name it. But I just feel like I never got to be a part of the world. I found this flaw. There's a loophole that the lottery didn't see. It's right here in the math. I don't know what this says. It looks like the numbers of crazy man drew in a cell wall. I cannot believe you are my accountant. A new film inspired by the true story of a Michigan retiree who discovers a mathematical loophole in the Massachusetts lottery. I'm playing the lottery and I won $15,000. Why didn't you just tell me? We barely have enough money to retire on. This is no time to risk it. Yes, it is. What? Can I help you? We'd like to buy 8,000 windfall tickets. I'm gonna help you first. See how he and his wife win millions to revive their crumbling small town in a Studio 5 first look at Jerry and Marge Go Large. We wanna start a corporation. We'll split the profits with the whole town. We hope you'll join us for that story and so much more come next week. Before we say goodbye and end this week's show, we have time for one final word. And we want to give that to the drummer for Hootie and the Blowfish, Jim Sonny Sonnefeld. If you could go back in time and give uh, little Jim some advice in light of all that you've endured in your life, what would you tell that little boy? I'll tell that boy, listen, Listen to the good words of advice. Don't push them off. Uh, listen to the people who have been on a path that you'd like to be on one day, either successful parents or successful humans or uh, people in a certain line of work, music or sports. Listen. I didn't want to listen as a kid. I wanted to do it my way. That self-will ran riot over time, and though I had some successes, I ultimately fell on my own sword because I was so convinced that I had the answers that I didn't want to hear anybody else's uh, knowledge. And in the end, I needed it. And that's when a big transformation happened in my life. Jim, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.